Hello friends. It is much later in the day than I intended to shoot this video, but it's been a very busy day, so let's just jump right into it. I have a story for you today about me as a middle school child. So buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a very dusty ride. So when I was in middle school, I, uh, did a lot more thinking about relationship related things in terms of friendships and family relationships and a lot less about practical thinking. One example of this would be on a hot summer day when I was about 12, I was building fence with my father down in one of the valleys that we put our cattle through, and this was around the time when I was just learning how to drive the four-wheeler, and I was allowed to drive it alone, but I usually didn't have to start it, because sometimes it was a little tricky to start, kind of like when you don't know how to start the rider lawnmower, and so you make sure that your dad is around when you start it, just to be sure, because otherwise you'll look really dumb when you have to go find him 20 minutes later. That's the way it was with this four-wheeler. and. At this time, I had been working with dad and my siblings all day, and we eventually found that we needed to get something from the house, or one of the sheds, don't really remember, not important. The point is that dad sent me. The four-wheeler was parked quite a ways up the fence line, so I was supposed to go start the four-wheeler, drive back home, pick up whatever it was that dad needed, and come back. This should have only taken, you know, tops 20 minutes. So I was just excited to get away from the fence building. I happily agreed to take the four-wheeler back. So I walked the little ways that it was to get to the four-wheeler. It wouldn't start. It puttered and it sputtered at me and I felt very dumb. Now, this is a trait that I have always struggled with but it was even worse at this time in my life. I didn't like asking for help because it meant I had to admit that I didn't know how to do something. So then my 12 year old brain is thinking, okay, how can I best take care of the situation without losing face? Well, maybe I should just walk back. Sounds like a good idea, right? Then dad can help me. Then he can help me start the four-wheeler and I'll get going. We'll only lose about 10 minutes total, probably. Because I'm sure the four-wheeler isn't dead. It'll be fine. When I say walk back, I meant walk back home. Yes, folks, that is what I did. At the time, the two decisions I had. One, walk maybe five minutes back to my dad and ask him for help. Two, walk 45 minutes to get home. This was before the days that my siblings and I ha all had cell phones, only my parents had them. I also did not have a water bottle with me at this time. So imagine gangly 12 year old Justine with way too long of hair pulled back in a ponytail, lots of split ends, ugly ratty baseball cap, kind of dirty tennis shoes, probably really butt ugly shorts, really big t-shirt, trudging up a gravelly dusty road with no hydration, thinking about life, contemplating things that I could have done better in friendships and things that I could have said in confrontations with people in the last couple of weeks before that not even having a care in the world about the thing that was currently happening, which was me creating potential worry in my parents' lives. So it had probably been 20 minutes. I was maybe a third of the way back because, you know, you never quite estimate how long it's actually going to take to walk. And all of a sudden I hear the roar of my dad's pickup behind me. And he slides to a stop in the gravel and opens the door and tells me to get in and he looks very upset and of course at this moment i'm finally realizing how stupid i had been 
But not until then, of course. He didn't say too much besides asking me why I hadn't started the four-wheeler and taken it with me. And of course I told him it was because I couldn't start it. I didn't want to bother him. He didn't say too much about that. Then we got home and my mother came out the door and she was in tears. It was at this point that I was finally realizing how stupid that decision had been. There's not much more to the story besides, you know, embarrassment and me writing a lengthy, thoughtful email to one of my mentors about the situation. Because, of course, that was me in middle school. There's not much to learn from that situation besides don't be stupid. What can I say? I was stupid quite often at that age. I'll see you tomorrow. (laughs) 